Hey, good morning, guys. Gabe Suarez here from Suarez Tactics. So, um, there was a, a thread on my uh, discourse forum, which, by the way, uh, is uh, a, a small version of the forum that we used to have called Warrior Talk. Um, this one's very private, small, uh, and uh, we keep it basically to topic. We talk about gun stuff, tactics, some political issues because they affect our, our uh, area of study, of course, but um, we, uh, everybody there is vetted. Uh, it's behind the paywall. Uh, and the, the cool thing is that when we discuss something, um, I have the ability now to step out into my training room and do a, a video for you guys discussing my, my point of view and, uh, and whatnot. And uh, so this morning, uh, there was a thread about um, the viability of the, uh, the AR pistol. Um, and uh, instead of uh, one with a brace and instead of an SBR and everything else. Now, here's the history behind this. because We were doing this a long, long time ago. Uh, in the early 2000s, uh, I made a number of trips to uh, Central and Eastern Europe and, uh, and, and worked with, with some of the, the folks over there. Fantastic people, beautiful countries. Uh, some of my favorite places in Europe uh, are in uh, the, uh, the Czech and, and then Slovakia area. Beautiful people, beautiful places. But in any case, I got a chance to work with their real, original uh, Scorpion submachine gun, not the one that's used today, the, the, the plastic version, but the original uh, VZ-61, the Carlos the Jackal SMG. And uh, it was funny because I, I brought it up to my, my shoulder and my cheek and shot it like it was an MP5, and, and these guys were all kind of laughing, and, and, they, and they said, you shoot like an American. And I go, well, and, uh, and they go, that's fine, that works, but here's how we do it. And uh, so they showed me how they run that, uh, that little mini SMG. I think I've got a picture of it up on my blog at some point. Um, but they just use a cheap weld. They don't use the, the shoulder. And I thought, wow, that's, that's very interesting. And, uh, and I remember that when I was running CQB back in the day with an MP5, there were times when I would float that MP5 and it wouldn't really be touching my shoulder especially when I was really moving quickly and so on, because having it on the shoulder actually, um, you know, it, it slowed things down a little bit. And uh, so I, I took that home and I started working with it and thinking, you know what, uh, this is something that needs some attention. Now, right around that time, a little bit, uh, a little bit before that, um, I was teaching in, uh, in Houston, Texas, and I, I met a gentleman named Navarro, who uh, showed me uh, a 7-inch uh, barrel AR pistol. And what he did was he had a, a buffer tube um, that had no, um, no uh, capability to add a stock. And, uh, you know, he, he showed that to me, and I thought, oh, that's fascinating. And, you know, how and basically we worked with it for, for a little bit, and I thought, you know, this has got some, some serious potential. And... Uh, you know, sometime after the, the, the Eastern Europe trip, I, I came home and I started working with AR pistols. I got a hold of some buffer tubes. I attached them to uh, some uh, lowers. There's some legalities I'm not going to get into, but, you know, it's for you to, uh, to research on your own. And, and I came up with something like this, okay? And, um, you know, it was, uh, it, was, it was really cool. It was nice. Um, and, uh, you know, I worked with it over and over, and this was long before uh, SB Tactical ever brought out their brace system. And, uh, you know, we, I started teaching classes with, with an AR pistol and, uh, uh, you know, had, had some, some pretty good success. Uh, and so, in essence, the way, the way it works is you have something like this. Now, this is an SBR. I just took the, the stock off for, uh, for illustrative purposes. But um, I've got a number of uh, buffer tubes, pistol buffer tubes. I believe KAK makes them and a few other people. They're the same exact length and everything else. And, um, uh, you know, again, there's legalities why the AR pistol needs uh, a buffer tube. And AR pistols have not been fucked with by the, uh, the, uh, the oppressors, as it were, uh, just braces. So... Um, you can still uh, organize your weapons like this with a simple buffer tube with no provision for the attachment of a stock, and, and you're good to go. And the beauty of this is, okay, this guy right here, this is an 8.5-inch barrel, uh, 300 blackout, um, and uh, 
I, like I said, I took I took the stock off. But um, so the way that I was teaching these before, and the way I'm going to start running them again, is basically just like this. Okay. So I bring it up to my cheek, and I am in essence stretching the pistol. So this this arm is driving forward. This arm is pulling back. In the same way that we run the stakeout shotguns, uh, the TAC-14 series that we optimize so well. I think it's important that you have a hand stop here so that you don't slide forward of the muzzle because uh, under speed it could very easily happen. So I've got this here like this. I drive it forward, all right, and it's sort of a, a reverse weaver if you dare use those terms, okay? And I've got the point of the stock on my cheek, and it's very, very accurate. We've shot this way out to 100 yards in class, uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's very efficient. Um, it's very efficient to change sides as well for CQB, and this is a very, very handy package that you can move around very easily. Now, if you want to shoot at greater distance, okay, you know, you got to have some upper body muscle here, so get to the weights and eat some steaks, um, but you can use um, the... Uh, the front part of the deltoid just shrug up a little bit like this. Now it's a bit of a compressed shooting position, you see, but it's still very useful, okay, for when you need something on the shoulder. This is this is part of the weapon. This is the way it's designed, so nobody can say that you've modified it to do this or that. You just modified your technique around the weapon itself, okay? So again, just basically it's like shrugging your shoulder forward, okay? And now you've got this on here like this, and you can work it, okay? And it works pretty good. The other thing you could do is you could use it on the point of your chest like this. Okay. And again, that gives you that fourth uh, point of contact. So you have first point of contact, second point of contact, third point of contact, and now you got a fourth one. Okay. So I think this is uh, probably the best way around all the political fuckery that is afoot today. Um, you know, take those, uh, take those braces and secure them. Uh, for later, and you still have the ability to uh, circumvent the uh, the nonsense that goes around today. Okay, and by the way, if you have one of these and you want to bring it to my rifle class, more than welcome, guys. I will show you how to use these. Okay. Oh, by the way, this is something that I use for training. Okay, it's an old Magpul magazine, uh, kind of worn out. I know, Dwayne, but they do wear out once in a while. Okay, and so I took the guts off. So now I can, I can work my manipulations without uh, the bolt locking back, okay? So that's something that, uh, that I suggest you do for your own training. Anyway, um, AR pistol, uh, you know, this goes back to, my God, 2009 and maybe a little bit before when, uh, when Jim Navarro showed me his uh, configured special in the parking lot of that Houston restaurant. Um, so there you have it, okay? Peace out. Got to hit the weights. And happy fourth.